Okay, folks, let's dive deeper into the understanding of how chemical characteristics of materials influence their reflective properties. Have you ever heard fancy expressions such as electronic and vibrational processes and what they have to do with imaging spectroscopy? No? Here you go. As electromagnetic radiation falls on a surface, it is partly reflected, absorbed, and or transmitted, whereas the fractions vary depending on material and wavelength. Actually, this is the basis for most remote sensing applications. The most important process for optical remote sensing is absorption. Radiant energy arriving at an object stimulates electron transfer and vibrational processes at the molecular level. In short, energy is extracted from the incoming radiation and released when the process relaxes. This energy is used for processes of material conversion, for example, photosynthesis, and leads to the heating of the object, which results in the emission of long-wave radiation. Since only discrete electron levels can occur in atoms and the excitation of oscillation processes is only possible by photons with a certain energy, a certain wavelength can be assigned to each absorption process. Electron transfer processes require a lot of energy. The bands caused by them are therefore usually quite broad and in the shortwave UV range, partly with absorption minima extending into the visual range, for example, iron oxides. The most common electronic processes revealed in the spectra of minerals are absorptions, referred to as crystal field effects. They are caused by unfilled electron shells of transition elements, such as nickel, chromium, cobalt, iron, etc., enabling the movement of electrons stimulated by absorption of energy. Thereby, the resulting absorption features mainly depend on the valence state of the ion. For example, iron 2 plus or iron 3 plus, as well as the crystal structure. Charge transfer bands produce features due to inter-element electron transitions, where the absorbed energy causes electrons to migrate between ions or between ions and ligands. The charge transfer may also occur between adjacent ions of the same metal in different valence states. Since such transfer requires high levels of energy, the absorption features are usually up to a thousand times more intense than those produced by crystal field effects. Thus, they appear mostly in the UV and visible wavelength region. In contrast to electronic processes, vibrational processes cause rather narrow bands in the SWIR range because their excitation requires less energy. Features produced by vibrational processes result from the vibration of ions or molecules in a crystal lattice. Thereby, the frequency of vibration depends on the number and mass of a molecule's atoms and the strengths of the ion bonds. The modes of vibration or fundamental bands of most materials occur at wavelengths greater than 2.5 microns, which is out of the spectral range observed by most imaging spectrometers. Therefore, the detection of features is reduced to so-called overtone and combination bands of molecules with very high fundamental frequencies. In contrast to the generally broad UV and visible bands associated with electronic transitions, vibrational processes produce sharp features that are stronger in the SWIR and decrease in intensity and frequency of occurrence towards shorter wavelengths. Molecules providing high-frequency fundamentals and hence producing particularly diagnostic vibrational absorption bands in the SWIR are water, hydrogen, and carbonate. In order to understand how vibrational processes happen, it is helpful to visualize atoms and bonds. Now, if you picture atoms as balls, the vibrations of atoms can be explained as springs. We differentiate stretching vibrations that can be symmetric or asymmetric and bending vibrations that can be in-plane or out-of-plane. As you have just learned, Imaging spectroscopy is based on the measurement of electromagnetic radiation reflected from different objects. These objects have different surface properties and therefore absorb, reflect, or transmit electromagnetic radiation in different ways. Apart from the geometric conditions of illumination and observation, as well as surface roughness, the reflectance properties of an object depend on its material and its physical and chemical properties. Because of these differences, many materials of the Earth's surface can be identified by analyzing their spectral reflectance signatures. These signatures can be represented in so-called spectral reflectance curves as a function of wavelength, whereas the wavelength is indicated on the x-axis and the intensity of reflectance on the y-axis. Here, 
you can see typical spectral reflectance curves of green vegetation, coastal water, and two minerals, kaolinite and calcite. Each material on the Earth's surface has a unique spectral characteristic. As explained previously, electronic and vibrational processes result in so-called absorption features, spectral absorption minima and maxima. The shape and position or wavelength of these features allows the identification of materials, their depth, to some extent the quantification. Oh, by the way, for the analysis of spectral features, a hyper-spectral resolution is required.